I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Getting rich fast does not exist, and if it does, it's certainly not sustainable. I'm not here to show you some garbage dropshipping or Amazon FBA results and tell you to buy a course. I'm just gonna show you all the ways in which I've made money online for the past five years or so. There's been a lot of ups and a lot of downs, a lot of failures, but I've finally gotten to the point where I can sustain a living online through my income sources. I want you to understand that none of these methods are very easy and none of them are gonna produce quick results. It might take you several years to even start producing a couple thousand dollars a month. And if you are willing to continue watching after knowing that, I respect you because it's a long grind, it's a lot of hustle, but once you get there, man, does it feel damn good to be making money online from your own work? Okay, let's move into the early days of how I made money online when I was still living with my parents. First things I really did when I had no other options, no really skills that were valuable that I could bring out to people was flipping on eBay and Facebook Marketplace and doing user testing tests. Yeah, that's what it is. When I was still in college, I was buying iPhone 6s with cracked screens. I was repairing them and then and flipping them for a profit by selling them back on eBay fully repaired. These profits range from anywhere from like $30 to $100 usually. Repairing iPhones is actually quite easy. It's easier than you think. I just learned from a few YouTube videos and bought some of the tools. I don't know how possible this exact method is, but flipping is definitely still possible. On the Facebook marketplace, you can find a lot of different tech items or any items in general that are being sold for a lot less than they're actually worth. And on top of that, you can negotiate with people in the chat to bring down the price even further. So I started doing this with not even cracked iPhones. I found that I could just flip iPhones that I found on Facebook Marketplace and sell them on eBay for more. To understand what the prices actually are, you need to go to eBay and add some filters for that item. They have filters for pretty much everything so you can make it exact towards the item you're trying to buy on Facebook Marketplace. And then you need to make sure that completed and sold items as a filter are clicked and then you scroll through and see the average price as to what this item you're trying to buy is selling for on eBay. So I would see an item on the Facebook Marketplace. I'd look up the price of that item to see if it was priced right on Facebook Marketplace to the point where I could make a profit. And then I'd message the person once I knew that and maybe negotiate it down even a little bit farther. Flipping is super cool and can definitely make you a lot of money per week and it's very beginner friendly, but be prepared for how much work it actually is to go through all of these chats, to negotiate with people all the time, to put all these items up on eBay, to ship the items. For a while I was like driving around my whole city picking up items that I could flip. And you need to be wary of scams and people trying to rob you. I actually got robbed once and almost got robbed twice for selling iPhones. So this is kind of a little bit risky, but just make sure you're talking to a real person and the right person. And you can make a lot of money off of flipping. Now, second thing I said during this time was the user testing sites. Again, something you need no experience for. I'm gonna leave a couple of these websites linked in the description below, but basically all you do is sign up to become a tester on one of these websites and what you're doing is like testing websites and apps for their usability and you're giving feedback these companies will pay you quite a bit of money sometimes around $20 an hour sometimes $60 an hour just to tell them how their app feels and their website feels and looks. The way you become eligible for these user testing sites is you gotta put in all your information, like your gender, your age, your marital status, and based on that information, they'll give you tests that they think will match with you. And it happens pretty randomly. You know, sometimes you're gonna get a lot of test opportunities and a lot of times you're gonna have a long period of time where you have no test opportunities. So this one isn't really consistent, but it's a good way to just like, if you have the opportunity, just make a quick extra 50 to you know, $100 a week. These are the really hard work hustler things that I had to do before I had any sort of experience. And I wasn't really focused on building up my experience which I wanna get into more. Let's go further into my making money online journey. So I used that money that I was making off of those things and my part-time job at Moe's that I was working at. And by the way, I don't think you should quit any of your full-time job or part-time job when you're trying to make money online because of how long it takes. I don't really suggest anybody does that, but I started to take this little bit of money that I was making and invest it towards things that would start building passive income for me. And for me personally, 
Apparently this was content creation, what I do right now. My YouTube channel was the first social media account that I actually created with the intention of making money from it. And I thought that spending all this money on camera equipment and accessories and programs that I needed to edit was an investment. And that's how you should view these things. And that's another golden rule of making and spending money. You should spend the majority of your money on things that are gonna pay you back eventually. So basically spend your money on investments, right? So like I've stated before in a few of my videos, I did not make any sort of money off of ad revenue on YouTube for three whole years. It took me three years of uploading a video a week consistently, at least a video a week to get monetized. I'll get more into my YouTube in a sec, but I wanna keep this in chronological order. I'm trying to at least. So I was making YouTube videos for a little while, a few months at that point, and then I decided to start up my Instagram after I had went vegan and I was getting really into vegan fitness. Again, something that at first did not make a lot of money at all, but now generates quite a bit. I started to learn Adobe Photoshop and I had to learn Premiere Pro for my YouTube editing. And these are all things that I learned through YouTube. A lot of people ask me how I learned how to edit well and all this shit. It was just through YouTube. You can do the same. YouTube is where you can learn anything. It's where you're learning something right now. So on Instagram, I was focusing on posting my fitness transformations and my high protein vegan meals. And I was posting literally every single day for almost an entire year, I remember. This was like 2019 or 2020. And again, something that was making me no money at the time, but when you know and when you believe that these things are going to start building up to the point where you can start making money off of them because of all the value that you've given, then you won't give up. And in fact, following the title of this video, getting rich slow, I don't think you should monetize your brand at first, pretty much at all. Just give out tons of free value through your videos, through your posts, and then once you start building a big enough following, then you can start monetizing it and setting up things external from the actual social media posts. Now what Instagram has generated for me is a lot of people traveling to my website to apply for my fitness coaching programs. But at the start, before I had a website, which I wanna talk about, I trained three people for free. I made a post on Instagram. I said, hey, I wanna train people for free to build up my testimonials, which is so important to making money online for anything. You first need to prove that you're worthy of someone purchasing something from you. And you do that through content and through testimonials on whatever and having like some sort of portfolio. So I trained three people for zero dollars, the free value, and they all actually saw great progress I was really happy with how that all turned out. And then I had a sizable enough following from making content for a while on Instagram. And I thought it's time to make a website and actually monetizing coaching plans and coaching people. And I would take payments for my coaching plans from PayPal. It's very easy to set up on any website, just like a PayPal button. But before we get into my updated website, I have to talk about the next thing that I did to make money online, which I think will be really valuable to you guys. And that is freelancing. Basically what freelancing is, is you start up a contract with somebody and they can pay you hourly or they can pay you per project on whatever you're trying to do. It's basically like working for someone for a limited amount of time on a contract on just like a single project or consistently through projects. And the way I was introduced to freelancing was through a site called Upwork. What I found with my YouTube videos was that I actually had built up a portfolio. YouTube videos were like my portfolio. And so when I realized that I have a portfolio for social media content creation and this type of stuff and even just videography work, I built a portfolio page on my old website so I could have that linked to my Upwork profile. So on Upwork, you basically just build a profile up, you put in your skills, what you're interested in freelancing, you put your portfolio on there, your resume, and then you start applying for freelance jobs on there. So I started applying for video editing jobs and specifically YouTube editing because a lot of people on that platform need YouTube editors. I had already shown what I could do through my YouTube. And while the YouTube channel itself was not generating money, it was a portfolio that could generate me money off of YouTube. So it didn't cost any money to apply on Upwork back then, but now you're gonna have to buy connects to actually apply to these jobs on Upwork. But you write a nice cover letter 
you apply to a bunch of jobs and it'll probably take you a long time to get accepted or even a message back from one of them and you negotiate a price on how much you want to make and you start working for them remotely online and you know i don't know what skills you have exactly but i would check out upwork and i would check out the other websites that i'm gonna leave a link in the description to it then got to a point where i was like okay i have these coaching plans i have my content creation i have a little bit of freelancing work i'm making a decent bit of money but I want to make another like passive income source where if I just make it one time and put it out on the internet, it'll just generate money for me. And that is when I made my paid vegan recipe ebook. This again, I made in Canva. I made all these vegan high protein recipes and I just put it on my website and it is an ebook, which means people digitally download it and I don't have to keep inventory for it. It's just an unlimited stock people pay me for it and then they get the ebook to download. So this is a great way of passive income. Once you have built up a pretty solid audience with content creation on social medias, you can then link them to your website and say, hey, I've given you all this free value. Now, if you want to get the premium version of the stuff that I'm putting out, which is this ebook, then you can head to my website, go check it out. And to this day, that ebook is still making me a little bit of money pretty much every month, even though a lot of people haven't bought it in a while, honestly. Okay, now because of social media, I had a very, very strong portfolio. Like my YouTube channel was growing, my Instagram was growing. Now I'm like, okay, it's time to monetize this more and so I updated my website because my coded website was so unoptimized and I started using Squarespace which makes everything so easy no I'm not sponsored by them but they should sponsor me and this is just a website builder where you can literally just like drag and drop stuff and just type stuff in and it'll align everything for you it makes it mobile responsive and of course you can set up payments on this website and so now on this website i have my portfolio people can contact me on there if they want me to do freelancing work even though i haven't done that in a very long time they can also buy my coaching plans which are now updated and to be honest the prices of my coaching plans have increased over the years because now there's more of a demand for them due to how many applications that i now get so once you're more in demand and once you have more of a portfolio and all your skills to show then you can start charging more money but like i said at the start it's going to take a long time to build all that up and be skillful enough to the point where you can charge the big bucks and it was around the same time which was like last year august that i started writing my self-help book on amazon well i produced it through amazon writing and producing a book is actually a lot easier than you think it is basically i just wrote my entire manuscript in Google Docs and formatted it in a way that it would look good on like actual pages in a book. Then you upload the manuscript to Amazon KDP. This is the Kindle Direct Publishing. You upload the manuscript, the description, all the stuff that you want to see when it's actually on Amazon. You upload the book cover, which you can make. I decided to make my own in Photoshop. And just like that, they will produce the books for you and put it up on Amazon for you. I have the link to the Amazon book in my description of all of my videos and the link in my bio on my Instagram. And so all the traffic that I get from the content that I make and the value that I give people, they click on that, they say, okay, I'm gonna go here, go check out the Amazon book. And that makes me passive income every single month. The hardest part of that whole process is just like writing an actual book, which took me the whole summer to write. And then I realized that I need to start putting this money towards something that's gonna generate me a lot of money with compound interest in the future, which is obviously investing. Now I have my Coinbase portfolio, which I invest crypto in. Now I have my Robinhood portfolio, which I went over the whole thing in my investing video. And that kind of goes over why I choose the investments that I choose and how to actually invest as a beginner. And recently I just started investing in the app Otis, which is the sponsor of today's video. This app is a dream for people wanting to invest in cultural assets. Otis is a stock market for cultural assets where almost any Anyone can buy and sell shares of rare collectibles, sneakers, and art. Basically, if you've ever wanted to own a super rare Pokemon card, game, or shoes, but you're too broke to, like me, you can invest in shares 
in all of those things. They have over 100 rare items to choose from and add new assets every week. And the good thing for all the beginners is that Otis covers all the information that you need to make a smart investment from the financials to the origins and cultural relevance of the piece. Basically, all you do is download the app, you sign up for free, and you can follow the weekly drops. And you just buy shares of the latest drops directly from Otis, or you buy shares from past drops from other Otis members. You can then earn a potential return by selling your shares to other Otis members, or if Otis sells the underlying asset for more than the price at which you bought your shares. The three drops that I'm most interested in and am investing in or am going to be investing in is the Top Sun Charizard card, the 1999 Blastoise card, and the Super Mario Brothers 3 video game. The reason I like these so much is because, well, I know kind of about Pokemon cards and video games as well, and it's just, it feels super cool to actually own something that's worth so much, but just like own a piece of it and get to be a part of that history, be a part of that journey and potentially make a return in the future from it. You can sign up for Otis using the link in my description and you can get your first share free when you fund your account. I go a little bit deeper into all of my income sources and how much money they all make me on my Patreon. And a big thank you to all my patrons on Patreon. This is another source of income for me, and it's a place where I'm putting out exclusive videos, podcasts, and blog posts that you can't find anywhere else. If you wanna go check that out, it's patreon.com slash Cole Hastings. I'm doing a lot more things about like my finances on there if you're more interested in that. I'll be making more videos and content related to that on my Patreon. So check that out, patreon.com slash Cole Hastings. Link is in the description. And that's it. I know there's a million other ways to do this, but this is just how I did it. And I wanted to share a little bit with how this journey has been so far and the hustle and the years of work that has been put into this. So stop falling for get rich quick schemes and just build up something that lasts like what I'm I'm doing. Well, I hope it lasts. All right, I'm going to go now. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day or night, and I'll see you in the next video.